three o'clock in KZN. Um, my name is Paul Renkin. I'm from FedSAS. Um, welcome to the session. Um, and I see the numbers are coming through. And um, today we have got a special guest, and Rian is also involved. He's not in Gauteng today, he's down in the Cape. So I'll steal his thunder when he wants to make everybody jealous. Um, but we are going to be speaking to him, and he's going to be guiding the conversation as we go through the process today. So welcome, Amal Andi Sesi. Vandaag praat ons weer Tech Talk dinsdag, a donnerdag, liefeste. Um, dinsdag is reeds voorbij, and we're ready on Thursday as well. So welcome to the session, just briefly as an intro. Um, and let me just make sure we don't push the wrong button here. Briefly as an intro, so that we know what we're talking about today. We're going to be talking to Candice Dupre, um, who's involved in Clever Touch technology. And she will explain the differences, as she has already explained to me, the difference between um, those uh, digital boards and interactive boards. So that gives you a bit of a hint as to where she's been going and where she's going to go in her discussion. Our provincial managers, before I hand over to Rian, we've just got a few of the housekeeping things and our provincial managers, please get hold of them. I also would like to just know who's on board today. So not just um, introducing everybody who's here, but I'm going to run a quick poll just to find out who we've got on board today. It really helps us. Um, as I've said before, and I've, I've had to temper it a little bit, when we're in a, in a normal setup that we can see everybody, or let me say, let me, let me say in the pre-2020 setup where we could see everybody, we knew who we were talking to. We don't have that luxury now. So we'd really like to know who's on board. And we, we're running a poll there. You'll see you've got options as to what your role in the school is. If you wouldn't mind, please filling that in just so we've got an idea. And we will share those results with you there as well. Um, you can obviously read them and go through. If you are on a tablet or a mobile device, you just need to swipe across from page to page and you will pick up another page and you'll be able to enter the details that are necessary from there. If you feel a bit aggrieved that I've put other in there, please type into the Q&A box um, what your role might be or what your, you know, what your function is and um, give us that information as well. Most importantly as well, if you are sitting in a group session, why don't you just drop something in the Q&A box? I'll show you where that is right away while that poll is still running in the background. Um, just drop something in the Q&A box so we can communicate and you can send in questions. Please feel free during the course of the session as well to type in questions there as well, and we will handle them as we go through the processes as well. Um, so yeah, I'm going to finish off that poll that we've now gone through. Thank you very much. We've got a 78% response, which is really great. Um, the, the experts tell us, and I sound like a stuck record when I say this, but the experts tell us if people don't respond in a minute, they're not going to respond. Um, I think that time might have got a bit shorter now that the world has changed a bit, but there you'll see we've got 11% of the audience of principals, 31% STB members other than principals, which is really great. School champions, we've got a few of those on board. Don't have any learners. I always encourage the learners. I always put the learners there. Folks, for those of you that don't know, the learners are part of the governing body in a high school. We must get them involved. All our efforts are because of the learners. And I always say it with a bit of a smile on my face, but with a bit of seriousness, we need to be listening to the learners as well. And then the others are there as well. So thank you very much. Once again, those of you that have just arrived, if you would like to place any questions or comments in the, in the Q&A box, we have got a team of people in the background that are helping as well. So you're welcome to please place questions in and we'll take them through after the session. Um, I'm just going to end off with that slide just to remind folks that we are in our training process and our training mode, if I can call it that, with regards to governing bodies. We're heading towards the last two weeks of election processes. So we've got a full schedule of um, training that is taking place. Um, uh, uh, throughout ruts right coming to you wherever you are. Some of them are duplicated sessions. You'll see we've had to duplicate them because of the, the changes in the school holidays and the changes in the calendars. Um, but generally, yeah, that's the whole lot. You'll be able to pick up the details for there. I will be sharing the details with you as well. Um, before I hand over to Rian, just to let you know, we are recording the session. We are running through Facebook Live as well. Um, Candice, I didn't ask your permission for that, but if you do object to that, please let me know and I'll stop that process. I'm sure you'd like it to run through Facebook Live, um, but we are recording it and we will send everybody who's attended a copy of the recording as well afterwards. So you'll be able to pick that up. Um, probably tomorrow it will be in your email boxes and coming through to you. So that's my introduction. And with that, I'm going to hand over to Rian. Welcome, Rian, from the wonderful Western Cape today. 
Good day, Paul. Thank you. And yes, welcome, everybody. It's good to be with you. You can see my setting looks differently and I'm seated today. I don't have a high enough table that I usually like to do the, the, the tech talks while standing up. Uh, my body language is just slightly um, different and more energetic. So yes, we're going to be talking with, with Candice Dupree. So Candice, uh, welcome from my side. Uh, I know Candice for a long time. We've been working together in the EdTech industry for quite a while. And I had to go back to 2014 and my slides will refer to that. When we first <laughs> talking about the fundamentals of uh, sensible adoption and integration of technology in the classroom. I'm going to share my screen quickly just so that we just set the scene. Um, Paul said he sounds like a broken record or a stuck record. I want to keep us in this space. Um, we're looking at 2021. Uh, if you hit shift, it's uh, at bracket at exclamation mark. So the year is a little bit in uppercase, but I think it's the season of living in uppercase. It's very dear makar or or coded, uh, you know, you don't understand what you see around yourself all the time. So um, it's put us in a new world uh, from 2020, just about a year ago, that our world was disrupted heavily. The EdTech um, education technology market and space um, has been talking disruption. We were not inviting COVID, but we were talking disruption for the last five, six, seven years and saying we've got to adopt to the world that we live in. And suddenly 2020 uh, accelerated our advancement into that space uh, very heavily. So welcome to that. Just as a uh, part of the broken record, the Center for Technology has been saying for the last five, six, seven years, we have to learn as we live. We've got to mirror our learning spaces with the living spaces that has become normal or natural. Homes with screens, I think 10 years ago, a big screen TV was about 10,000 Rand the same size screen or the double the size screen is about the same price now. <laughs> um, flat panels in homes, Wi-Fi, uh, Bluetooth in cars, uh, uh, cell phones with powerful processors and memory that's stronger than a lot of the computers that we used to run the school with a few years ago. So, so we've been saying learn as you live, teach as you live, manage as you live and govern as we live. But for this year, we've definitely focused on two major key points. And the one is this is how we roll. If you have teenagers in your vicinity, you will know they say, hey, mom, this is how we roll. This is just how we do it. So I want to put our um, governors, our schools, into the mode of natural reaction to this uncertainty, to the world we live in. Let's just frame it as it's been disrupted, but there's a lot of things that we can respond to, not in an emergency mode, but in a natural mode. So let's keep that in mind. This is how we roll. We're going we're gonna to keep moving. We're going to dance with this music. The second one is um, something that I found in speaking to schools, um, consulting with schools about education technology. And it's not just technology that's relevant in this statement, but everything that is in the market is not for all schools. We know that. Some schools uh, have different contexts and some solutions might work for your school. Your school has a specific DNA. Uh, so everything in the market is not for all schools and everything at a school is not for all learners or can I say teachers and classrooms. You know, that's why some people play, play sports and some do choirs. Some sports guys play rugby and sports girls play netball and hockey or there's chess or something. like that. So we know that everything at a school is not for all learners. Yet we do things, all these niches put together bring us to a place. The same with technology in the classroom. It might not be that every solution is for every class and every teacher, and I'm sure that Candace will be speaking to that as well. Um, it might mean that it's different for subjects uh, as well. So let's, let's uh, keep that in mind. Just framing today's um, discussion, if, if you were part of the FETSAS family, as you want to, 2014 het ons begin met uh, digitale burgerskap, so ver terug soos 2014. 2014, we started a major digital citizenship campaign. Uh, 2015, we framed uh, or coined the phrase forward to great teaching with technology, with four cornerstones, two basic principles, and then eight actions. And the four cornerstones I've got on the on this screen there, it's relevant today. In 2014, we said a school must look at infrastructure and connectivity. There's a foundation and the building in which um, the teaching takes place. We look at productivity. That's the admin, finance, communication space, uh, Google Apps for Education, Microsoft, um, the free version, A1 license for schools all around the country, actually all around the world. 
Then there's the delivery space where we're going to be aiming today. So how do we deliver an enriched, strong lesson? And it's a learning space. I did not define classroom there. I said it's a learning space because we can learn in a lot of different spaces. And then the last cornerstone was that of learner interaction. What devices or books or uh, methods and processes we use for learners. So these four cornerstones still stand very strong today. And we're going to be delving slightly deeper into it. If I look at the delivery and consumption side, um, this is fundamental to how you design a solution for your school. We want to deliver good lessons. We want to deliver teaching because uh, in teaching, learning takes place. Um, and there's a whole pedagogical process to that. I'm not going to go into that now. So yes, today we're focusing on delivery and consumption. If I look at delivery quickly, just had a uh, chat with a school yesterday or the day before yesterday. And the first thing that they said was, we want to enrich our lessons, enrich our delivery. A PDF on WhatsApp is not a great lesson. <laughs> How do we make it colorful? The attention span of learners, not as long as it used to be. We need color, we need images, we need video, we need motion, uh, possibly 3D images. We need screens that are interactive, that can use apps, big displays. We are so used to big displays in regular life. Why not have big displays? And then one that I really promote and love is the recording of what happens in the classroom and making that available on demand. The YouTube, the catch up, the DSTV box office, whatever model of, if we've done it once, we permanentize it and we get miles and miles out of that <laughs> so that one lesson can live five, six, seven times or until next year or for 10 years. So yes, that is that where we came from in 2014. We're just embroidering onto that today. And in saying that, I want to hand over to Candice. Uh, she's part of the Clever Touch team. Um, she's going to share with us a great topic about um, Gen Z and the evolution of the classroom. <laughs> I love the generations model, and maybe we should have a, a session on that at a later stage as well, just to understand the difference in generations. So, Candice, uh, welcome to the session today. We're really uh, keen to have you. Um, I've looked at your slides, and I'm really excited to hear what you're going to uh, share with us today. So, the floor is all yours. If we were in an audience uh, in a hall, I would say, join us on stage, uh, take the <laughs> microphone, and the audience will clap at this point in time. So, uh, please share share your thoughts with us and welcome uh, to the FETSAS Tech Talk family today. Perfect. Hi, Ryan, And thank you so much for, for the invite. And um, hi to everybody that's um, that's attending this webinar today. So yeah, thank you for that introduction. I think Ryan took half my presentation, but um, I think that's what happens when, we, when we've worked together for six, seven years. So yes, like Ryan said, um, my discussion is around Education 4.0 and how that's been driven by Gen Z. Um, and I know it's very often a very scary place to be in, um, but, but let's just, just take it, what do they say? How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. So before we get into that, let me just introduce um, myself and the company that, that I represent. So I have been in the education space or ed tech space specifically for the last 11 years. And um, I now represent a company called Interactive AV Solutions, who are the distributor for Clever Touch Technologies. So I'm not going to get into too much about the product itself. You can go to clevertouch.com to have a look at that. But they are one of the top three brands in terms of inter interactive technology globally. Um, they're number one in a, in a number of the European countries. They are a purpose-built technology. So when we talk about how do we equip our classrooms? It's essential that you look for purpose-built technology. It's not a screen that's you know, being developed for a, a boardroom or a TV that's trying to fit into a classroom. It's technology developed by teachers for teachers. Um, so I won't get into too much about the product itself, but um, I will be available certainly for questions um, and I will give you my details afterwards. But yeah, so that's, that's the introduction is that really we are, or I represent a company called Interactive AV. Um, and we, we truly do distribute um, some great products and have our teachers at heart. Okay, but to get into the uh, discussion for today, sorry, where did my, there we go. Sorry, I lost my cursor. Okay, so to set the scene, um, I think Rian chats, you know, mentioned briefly, 
But you would see in the corner here, how familiar does this look? I knew, I know when I grew up, it was chalkboard, chalkboard dust. We were sitting in rows, um, crammed into a classroom. There was no such thing as learning from home. Um, you know, bringing the environment from outside into your classroom. That didn't exist. We were there to be spoon fed information and we had to regurgitate it in tests. Sure, that was the time. Um, you know, and very often I think that's still when we think of a classroom environment, this is the picture. But times have changed. Um, the, the economies have changed, industries have changed. And with that, schooling has had to try and keep up. Today, we not only face the 21st century, but we also face Generation Z and post COVID. I think COVID has forced many institutions um, to relook at, at the way they have taught for many years. So Gen Z, um, I'm sure as many, many of you listening in here actually have a Gen Z in their house or in their family. So the Gen Z is from the ages of five to 23. So this is quite pivotal as this is the generation that's entering the school, is currently in our schooling system and will be one or two of the first, um, oh, sorry, will be the first in the next year or two uh, to, to exit tertiary institutions. So to exit uh, teaching colleges and move into schools. So if anything's gonna be disrupted, now's the time. This Generation Z are true digital natives. So they are the first generation to be born with a smartphone in their hand. Um, the millennials, everybody thought that they would disrupt. But to be very honest, during the, you know, computers only really came into effect and internet and so forth towards sort of mid-generation of that millennial cycle. Um, but when you talk about Gen Z, I mean, you've got a two-year-old who can operate the phone better than their parents. Uh, it's it's they they are consumers of apps. If you have a look at um, the number of online schools that have been been developed now for this generation, uh, they learn by group based learning, um, online learning, and through gamification. They prefer an individualized approach. They are driven by social change, um, and they they are a generation that aspirations are completely different to to any other generation. They're also the first generation that has disrupted any buying behavior whatsoever. So they drive consumerism um, completely. Okay. So what does this mean for schools? So let me just take a step back. In terms of the evolution of ed tech and learning, like I've said, it is linked to it is linked to the economies. <laughs> They're also Sorry, no, guys. That's, that's okay. That is that is the life of, of home, home learning. <laughs> so please do not, please do not bother me. I've got a webinar. True was both my six-year-old bothers me. So I do apologize for that. It's so a generation to go back, Z thing, um, that's a generation. A gen no, yeah, no. They are in case. Concentration span is minimal. Um, if I want it, I want it now. So so they're in case, their in point is is the generation Z. Uh, so well coming back to it, how we have how we have evolved and where we are today in terms of innovation society, 21st century learning has been driven by industry. And because of industry, we've landed up where we are now with, with what we're talking about today is Generation Z, where we went from centuries of experience with just memorizing, pure memorizing, like I said, it was a towards sort of internet enabled learning, then more of a consumption of knowledge. But where we are today is how do we empower education to produce innovators? Um, and that brings about a completely different way of teaching to get to this outcome. So how do we do it? That's all very well and, you know, and said, you know, we've, we, we're in this 21st century, we're in education 4.0, but what are the, some of the things we can do to ensure that we are meeting these, these natural habits of a, of a generation's ed? And so I found this very interesting piece of research, research called the five eyes. So excuse my pronunciation here, but I'm sure, sure the teachers on this call would know how to pronounce this better, but imbibbing, which is, which is basic concepts, iterating, interpreting, interest, and innovating. So if we take these five concepts and apply them to the classroom, this is what we get. So 
the need to use different sources. Using a textbook is no longer going to engage your learners. We need to be able to use um, full, so videos, um, like Rianne's already said, 3D content, content animations. Uh, you'll see here under iterate, we've said gamification, um, turning tests into online games. It's the way these student, these learners are now wired. Um, it's to bring concepts across through fun. Interpret and interest. So here, forming, um, like I said, what are Gen Zs like? They prefer um, group-based learning. And um, so by forming groups, covering part of a concept in the class, and then having the technology to equip these students, empower these students to continue the lesson together outside of this environment. And then, of course, innovate. The world is your oyster with purpose-built technology at your fingertips to innovate, not only as a teacher, but also as a learner. So that begs the question, does your current technology enable you and certainly um, empower your learners who, who, like I said, are the Generation Z now? Um, does it empower them to, um, to innovate? So that's great, but what does that mean for the classroom? So if we have a look at, at what it means, bringing in interactive technology, there is a reason for it. Um, and, and that revolves around the fact that it integrates with apps. Um, you start, Rian spoke about an enriched lesson. That's exactly what interactive technology does. It's about creating an enriched, um, engaging lesson where you can have students on their devices, it can be their cell phone, it can be their, their tablet, it can be a laptop, um, and they and they then start engaging with the content. For a lot of classes, and I'll go into one of our clients that's down in the Cape, they made the conscious decision not to bring into student devices, but to bring in Clever Touch Interactive Display, because they found that the two, and of course I'm talking primary school here, students get the benefit of coming up to the board, engaging with it, even in COVID, because it's obviously you can use gloves with the screens, um, you can clean it. So with them coming up to the board, they are still engaged, they are still part of the lesson. If the classes did have devices, they would be able to share their lessons directly to the board. So as a teacher, you can walk around, can you imagine you're no longer stuck to your chalkboard, to your whiteboard? Um, to if your project is just displaying a PowerPoint, you're no longer stuck to that by the use of interactive technology. You are now able to become that facilitator. So all of, a all of a sudden, with this technology, you are flipping the classroom. You can now teach from the back of the class. You can teach outside. Um, you have the ability now to control your technology from anywhere. You have the ability to put the learning back in the student's hands by them being able to display their content. So think about the power of group work. They can go outside, take a video, immediately share it with the class inside or the, or the you know, when they get back in, share it with the, with the class as to what they've discovered. Um, same for if you had to do a biology and a dissection, they'd be able to, to share this. Um, so it kind of moves away from the old transparencies where it was very one-sided. You think about all the chalkboard, the whiteboards that we used. Um, and we start flipping the classroom. And that's the value of an interactive screen versus just something like a projector. Then, of course, like I said, I, I haven't chatted too much about the devices. Um, I think you've had a number of you've had the likes of Acer and Microsoft on here. But, but it's about creating an ecosystem in your class. Uh, it's about creating that front of room display. If you think about your hybrid classes, I'd hate to think how difficult it is for teachers to try and engage with students off their laptop while teaching and have kids in the class if they didn't have an interactive screen. Because here you would be able to bring the kids into the class for them to be a part of the, the discussions, for them to sh see the, the, the screen, share their screen, still annotate over the content, so it really becomes an engaging lesson. And of course, the difference between an interactive whiteboard and an interactive display are all the free apps that you get with a Clever Touch display. So 
I will I will just briefly briefly talk about that now. But fundamentally, Generation Z have grown up or are growing up in a time that is revolutionized by technology. We are driven by technology, and it's only going to get I won't say worse, just more advanced. Um, AR, VR, um, uh, you know, all of that is going to some some way somehow form part of our of our learning if it hasn't already. So I'm just going to touch on two two aspects of this, and in terms of how you prep how you prep your learners. So. In terms of an interactive display, and the reason I put this in here is because obviously over the last 11 years, I've had a lot of questions from schools. I've got a projector. I just need, you know, I, that, I'm happy with that. And you know what? There's, there's a pace for every teacher. Um, and not every teacher is going to delve into needing an interactive display. But the reason for my, my discussion today was because you may not be ready, but that's where your learners are at. Um, and if you're a principal, you're going to have your new your new um, teachers who are coming out of college. They are Gen Zers. That's all they know. Um, so, so really is now uh, this is especially with COVID, and I know it's disrupted a lot of schools. But it's chance to now take a step back and think. Well, sure, we we really do. If we want to keep our students engaged, um, you know, certainly concentrating, focused. Uh, very often, you know, we, we think because the student isn't concentrating or they're not focusing on the content, they've got ADHD or they're ADD. Whereas we I don't often look at the way we're trying to teach them and are we teach them according them to, to their needs. The nice thing about interactive technology is that it speaks to all, all types of learning. So from your kinesthetic, your auditory, your visual, it, it caters for everyone. Of course, it also caters for your children with special needs. Um, so there's no need to go out and try and do fancy things. This speaks to just all those requirements. Like I said already, you you integrate, um, you create in interactive, engaging lessons. You have your students share the content. You can split your screen. There's no need to 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 try and have a flip chart on the one side. And I was taught advanced financial management on a flip chart, so I understand the frustration. There's no need for a flip chart anymore. Teacher can have their lesson up have um, on the other side their whiteboard. It creates an environment that's easy for you to teach. You save it, you share it immediately through a QR code, email it to your students, they've got the notes. They don't have to sit there anymore, try and write down the notes as quickly as possible because they're gonna miss out something. Now they can simply focus, listen and understand. So those are really, really powerful features of why interactive technology as to why clever touch interactive screen versus an interactive whiteboard, again, it has to come, it's about the apps, it's about your cost of ownership. So to give you an idea, an interactive whiteboard solution, projector, interactive whiteboard speakers, you would look at more or less 40,000, I'm talking high-end brand here. For a clever touch um, display, you're looking at 39,000. So, Give or take, bearing in mind we are a distributor, so you would need to work through your channel. But, but the fact of the matter is, this shouldn't be a price discussion anymore. This is about the value to your learners and to your teachers. It's about how do you integrate with what you already have. So Clever Touch integrates seamlessly with um, both Google Classroom as well as Microsoft. You can access your cloud. So for those schools um, that are using either Google Cloud or OneDrive, access everything off there, open it up, carry on teaching. For those that have already got smart learning suite um, licenses, you would simply just open those in our link software and you carry on. But the big thing about why move away from interactive whiteboards to interactive screens also has to do with the longevity. It's the cost of ownership. With these screens, you are able to set the timer that they can switch off Interactive whiteboard, you don't. And very often teachers, especially with the changing classes, forget that board on, the globe eventually goes, and it's to replace globes are costly exercise. So it does in the long run start paying off to start looking at moving to your interactive screens, simply because that's also where the world is moving to. Um, it is equipped with an Android device already. You can plug in your Windows PC. So that's, that's just where we are where we are moving to. You know, you're able to show the 3D content 
With the Clever Touches player, there's also no additional costs. So once you buy this board, you've got your uh, the screen. You mean once you've bought your interactive screen, that's it. You don't need to keep reinvesting in software costs, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and certainly, it doesn't matter what technique, not this, let's try it again, what technology you um, implement, the key is also teacher training. It's about understanding how to use it. And for me, Clever Touch is definitely one of the most simplest products to use. So, of course, like I said, Gen Z consume apps left, right, and center. So here are just a few apps that you can you can have a look at that in my experience have certainly made classroom teaching a lot easier. Um, and some that I've come across some of our schools are using and using successfully. And, and again, that was to bring the, the big thing about apps is ease of use for you as a teacher, access to information for your students, but also gamification. So it brings across a concept in a fun way that these learners are able to, to grasp because that's the way they learn. So to end off, I thought I'd just give you a, a brief overview of how are some of our, our clients have done it? How have they moved? And, and specifically these two, they had um, projectors, then they, they went to interactive whiteboards, and then they have moved to, to Clever Touch interactive displays. And the big reason for that is yes, it's obviously the cost of ownership, like I said, um, all of a sudden, they don't have to replace the globes. There's a five year warranty. Um, it's easy to use. But if I look at Fairlands Large School, who are here in Johannesburg, they actually just teach off the Android device. So all their teachers have OneDrive, access to OneDrive. They have a Microsoft account. They come in, log in, have access to their, their um, content, and move on. Because in their school, the teachers move, the students don't. So it is simple and easy to use for the teachers just to pick up, pick, you know, log in and, and carry on. So that was a big, big, big reason um, for them moving to interactive screens because of that integration and because of the apps. For, um, for Monte Vista down in Cape Town, very, much the same actually. They, they were fully equipped um, school with IWBs they replaced all of those with, with interactive screens. So they have 29 Clever Touch interactive displays. And the big thing again that we, we found there is that they said it's again an all-in-one teaching device. You don't need to, to try to find your, your, your laptop. You don't need to try to plug in other devices, try plug in a visualizer. Um, this really creates an ease of use, a seamless experience for teachers. And when you are teaching Generation Z, that's the one thing you want to ensure is that your technology works for you. You want to ensure that it is seamless, it is easy to use. Um, it does create, give you that opportunity to create those engaging collaborative lessons. Okay, so in saying that, I do have a, a poll. So I just want to see if I can bring this up. Otherwise, Fetzis also has a poll. So just give me a second to stop sharing this and just to see if I can quickly share my poll. Um, here we go. So if you all have a cell phone or laptop on you, if you can please go to on your web browser, go to ansr.it and then forward slash 4300. Or if you go to this URL and it asks you for a code, just put in 4300. And I'll give you a few minutes. Um, just so that you know, I've just dropped that in the chat box as well, folks. You should be able Great. to pick that up out the chat box as well. Okay, so we, they're coming in. There we go. So some people have smart, some people are using a whiteboard, a laptop and a projector. Um, some are teaching of teams, others are using interactive whiteboards. Lots of whiteboards, 
projector, smart boards, Zoom, they're using whiteboards and projectors, whiteboard. Right, so there's more coming in. Here we go. So lots of whiteboards and projectors. So I think the key here is in seeing this is, is to come back to the question with, with the whiteboard and projector, how can you take those five eyes um, and still meet the, the needs and the demands of your Gen Z learners? Unless you have a great SGB who, who would love a demo and a clever touch display, I think that the big question is, is how do you, how do you innovate with what you have in hand um, to ensure your learner is constantly engaged uh, and, and still has fun while learning? And the big thing about this generation, as you saw with my son, was they want things and they want it now. It's that instantaneous information. So how do we ensure that that, that can be delivered using the, the resources at your disposal? Okay, so I'm going to stop it there. There we go. Okay, so the majority on this call are using whiteboards, laptops, um, which is okay. We also have to start somewhere. But um, I think the one thing, like I said, that I hope this, sorry, let me just give you my details. I hope that this at least a takeaway is those five eyes. So how do you take those five eyes use what you have and, and engage with this Generation Z because they're not gonna slow down. It's only gonna get faster. So with that, I thank you. Um, here are all my details should you wish to get in touch with me. So you can go to clevertouch.com to have a look at the technology that I represent. You can also uh, pop me an email. It's candice at ias-av.com. Um, and certainly give me a shout, send me a WhatsApp, we have an experience center here in Johannesburg as well as in Cape Town. So we can certainly do demos, um, assist you where we can. Uh, and we've got a number of partners who we work with to ensure that your technology works for you. So Rian, thank you very much. Thank you, Candice. Yeah, I don't know if there are any questions. I've got a few questions. Yes, <laughs> for sure. We still have some time. But thank you for the session. Yeah. And uh, I, I love it that your your youngster just walks in and says, but mommy, I need you now. I think we've got to remember that uh, the perfect uh, webinar is not the one where we're in the studio, but where life goes on. And it's all, it's all about our children. So uh, kudos for that. Uh, um, and yes, it's a reflection of the generation. So the, the generation model, I think, is something very important to me. The technology advancements, and I don't want to call it technology, the tools of our time. Um, you know, we don't talk about our cell phones as if it's an alternative now. It is yeah. the de facto standard. Correct. Mm -hmm. Most of us have stopped our telecom lines in many cases mm -hmm. because our cell phone is with us. So, 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 so there's a the technology. One element that I want you to quickly speak to, and I think that's critical, looking at who was on board today spe specifically, I think we've got 60, 70% uh, non-principles, which, which I really love as, as the audience today. Teacher training, teacher adoption has been yeah. possibly the number one, um, not stumbling block and hurdle in a bad sense, but the, the, the biggest uh, cog to turn so that we move into this. There's yeah. an entrenched way of learning and teaching. There's an entrenched methodology. That's the curriculum. There's lesson plans, mm -hmm. everything. How do we speak to empowering, if that's a good word, but maybe uh, equipping teachers and, and making it easy to onboard. One, an SGB can buy equipment, hang it against the wall, box, box ticked. Yeah. But the process needs to be a yeah. change management people process. How do you assist teachers? How easy to onboard? Is there yeah. a learning forum? Uh, maybe yeah. just speak to, to the importance and the process yeah. that, so that educators can follow. Mm. So, so I have this sort of a golden rule. It's, it's purpose-built software, purpose-built hardware, that equals um, outcomes. But if that is not encompassed with teacher training, you can forget it. That's, that's as nice as a piece, of the, a piece of hardware on the wall. So teacher training is by far the most important element. And I think that's the one thing why I like Clever Touch so much um, is because the ease of use, 
So we're not telling you to try and learn a whole new software. You can simply take those PowerPoint lessons that you are familiar with, take your PDFs that you are familiar with. It's in an app. So much like you would access something off your cell phone, it's in an app, it's in the cloud. Start by using that. So the way our training works is that we follow the SAMR model. We don't expect you to be this champion teacher overnight, but your uh, SUB- uh, Can I stop you? Yeah? Uh, in the interest of possibly someone that doesn't know what uh, SAMR- Sorry, so, just, sorry, just, yes. Yeah, I forget, yeah. I'm sorry, Beanie, the, the 11 years, I just fly <laughs> past that one. So basically what we do is we take you through a substitution model. So it's substitution, modification, augmentation, and then redefine. Um, at that redefine, you are a champion teacher pushing out these super awesome lessons, a rate to none, using their technology to its fullest. We don't expect teachers to get there. We understand your the demands on a teacher, and I take my hat off to the teachers. Um, but where we, because the SGB is invested in this, and we understand the importance of this technology and the change it'll make in the in their teaching, but also in the learning. We want to at least get you past that substitution phase. So what that means is we've removed your chalkboard, your whiteboard, your projector. You now have this interactive screen in front of you. So what we do is we at least take you through how to get onto the whiteboard, how to share your documents, how to access your documents you're already familiar with. Um, you know, you, it's, it's all about using those tools you already know, but enhancing them. So Rian, like bringing in a simple thing like splitting your screen. You no longer have to have one whiteboard here, another one there to try to get your accounting equations across, you know. Um, it's about ease of use. So how do we split your screen? How do you annotate over your current documents? How do you use that QR code to share to your students? So I think it's, it's again, it's, it's one of those things, like I said in the beginning, how do you eat an elephant one piece at a time? It's very important to get the teachers part their substitution model. Um, and then have a look at a champion teacher, because again, you don't want to rely on me, on the company I work for, on resellers, on whatever. You need to also become self-sufficient. So at Clever Touch, we obviously have a um, training, um, what's the right word now, package that we would give to the school for them to, to use and to continuously training. I think that's also the important thing is continual professional development. This isn't a once-off thing. You're not going to learn overnight, but start developing. And it doesn't matter what technology you have in your school. Start developing this community of teachers where you can sort of feed off each other um, because that's how you grow. If one teacher all of a sudden learns something new, set that, that side, whether it's a, I don't know, a Friday afternoon or whatever it is. I know time is very precious for teachers, but when this is your tool, it's essential that, that you know how to use it because it's going to benefit you and the learner. So, Ren, I hope that answered your, your question. Yes, I just wanted to speak to that because I think that's critical that we understand there is a teaching process and yeah. the technology, and I'm putting words from my mouth, not into yours, but just, just adding to it, I don't think technology is the end. It's the means no. to the end. Yeah, absolutely. We've got to fit it into a process, and there's a specific school DNA. You mentioned uh, Law School Fairland where the, the learners were rotating. Oh, the learners weren't rotating, but the teachers, the teachers. were rotating. Yeah. Um, where you can just walk into a class and start teaching on the board. So there's a specific, yeah. if your school is uh, different to that, where the learners are rotating, um, you know, they come to, to the board, they see it, all the learners get it. There's, there's a sense of it that all classes don't need to look the same, but you just need to have access to the same issues for the same yeah. um, subjects, uh, uh, you know, just the same experience in, within the same grade. I've got another question more on Gen Z.